In this video, we're going to be doing a power jack repair on a Toshiba laptop. If you look, you'll see that the jack is completely missing. Well, it's actually stuck on the inside of the computer. It's not as tough of a repair as you would think, and I'll show you once we open it up. It's in there connected to two wires, which, are connect which is connected to the motherboard. So it's not actually, the jack's not actually not pu pulled off on the motherboard. It's actually still connected to the wire. So first thing I want to do is take out the battery, and we're just going to take the whole thing apart to get to the motherboard level. I take the battery out first. We take out the hard drive and all the other components second. And then we unscrew the case and get all the screws off the bottom part of the case. See if there's any screws on the top part of the case. So we get the hard drive out. We're going to take the RAM out. Just checking if there's any other components that need to come out. Right now I'm taking out what I think is holding the plate that's above the keyboard onto the computer because I usually don't take all the screws out of the bottom of the laptop before I take the keyboard off and try to get the screen off. But So I'm taking out what I'm guessing are screws that might be holding that plate above the keyboard on and then I'll flip the laptop over. I'll check to see if those screws were holding it on. If not, no big deal. I had to take these screws out anyway. This video is not being recorded in real time. This was recorded at the shop, and I'm just narrating over it. So I might be guessing wrong of some of the things I'm doing, but I'll just narrate anyway. Get the CD drive out of there. There's only one screw holding that in, which is one of the ones I just took out. It looks like I'm actually going to just um, go for it and just take all the screws out of the bottom of the case since I have it down here. But you can do it either way. See, my main objective is to get the screen off. I like to take the screen off as soon as I can because I don't want the screen to get in the way. It's fragile. It's unwieldy. I don't want it scratched. I just want it out of the picture. And the way to do that normally is to get that plate above the keyboard off. And I'll show you when we flip the laptop around. This one might not have that plate. But I figured, eh, since we're down here, let's just take all the screws out of the bottom. It's a matter of preference. Now you're going to see the little markings next to each screw hole on the Toshiba laptop here. Those markings tell you the size of the screw that should be in the hole. So I'm just throwing all the screws in one big pile because I know where they go according to those markers on the next to the screw holes. So I don't have to worry about keeping track of the screws as much, which is really nice and is a nice feature of the Toshiba laptops for us technicians. They've been doing that for years with those numbers next to the screw hole. It's usually letter F with a number, usually a six, seven, five, three. I believe it might be millimeters that it's actually measuring. And then always check the back of the computer. There oh, might be screws back there too holding the screen in. The back panel. Not the underside, just the back panel. You know, the spot where you normally plug in, like power jack or whatever. Okay, I'm thinking all the screws are out. Just want to double check. Now, this is a newer model I've never worked on before, so I'm checking now to see if there's a plate holding the keyboard in. A plate that's right under the uh, screen and right above the keyboard. And this one doesn't have a plate, but you'll see what it does have once I I figure it out. Because right, right now I'm in the process of figuring it out. How do I get the keyboard off is my question now. How do I get the keyboard and the screen off? You feel around, you look around, you see if there's a plate above the keyboard, below the screen. It's usually the key that when that plate comes off, and if you watch in the earlier laptop videos, that's usually the key to getting the screen off, getting the keyboard off. And I can't seem to find one. Sometimes, especially with Vios, it's all one piece. 
and you have to uh, find a different way to get the screen and keyboard off. But I think the solution will present itself here. If it doesn't, I'm going to fast forward it till I get to it. <laughs> this is what takes time in the laptop video or the laptop repairs, guys. Figuring out how to get these babies apart. Okay, so I'm trying to pull the whole top section off in one piece. It's very unlikely, though, it comes off in one piece because that keyboard is in there pretty solid. It's probably screwed in somehow. I like to use my fingernail so I don't scratch any of the plastic to kind of pry the top and bottom plates apart. And they are coming apart, if you see that. But there's something still holding them in. In some cases, it might be a screw that I missed on the bottom of the computer. In this case, I don't know what it is yet. But remember rule number one in laptop repair. I'm probably going to mention this every video. If you have to force it, you're doing something wrong. It's probably going to break. If you have to force anything apart in a laptop repair, don't do it. Stop and find out what's holding it in. Right now, I'm checking for screws I may have missed. Sorry, it's a little out of view. And I found one. A screw that I missed. Now let's see if it comes apart. Still prying along the edge. Not forcing it, knowing that if it's not coming apart, something's holding it in. Okay, we're making some progress here. It's coming apart, but it's still something holding it together. It could be a ribbon cable, but, you know, these laptops have to be designed so that technicians can take them apart too, like Toshiba technicians. So, if it is a ribbon cable, it's unlikely that that's the only thing holding it in because you'd have to reach your hand all the way under the keyboard. And it looks like I'm onto something here. If I was a little brighter, I would have found this in the first place. There's a plate, a real small plate above the keyboard. Comes right off. And voila. Screws to hold the keyboard on. Now we're getting somewhere. See, so guys, you just be patient. The solution will present itself every time. Do not force anything. I, I could have very well broken this laptop and gotten it apart. I learned my lessons. There's a little latch there that keeps the keyboard snapped in after you take the four screws out. And then there's a ribbon cable holding it in. Ribbon cables come off in different ways. This is one of the ones that... You have to pull it outward. That little brown piece has to be pulled outward, and then the ribbon cable comes out. So you just want to get each side, the left and right side, push it outward. The cable comes right out. Again, ribbon cables aren't meant to be forced out either. And then the other ribbon cable there was for the mouse pad, probably, to get the keyboard out of the picture. Now let's see if there's any screws or anything else that needs to be disconnected before we take the top off the computer. A couple more ribbon cables. Once you see that you're able to get to the ribbon cables, unhook them because they're probably going to be the reason the thing won't come apart in the end. Now let's try taking the top off and see if it's a little bit easier this time. And there was one more wire holding it in. I think it was a speaker for the upper left-hand speaker. So let me pull that wire out, which you can't see in the footage here, but that's what it is.
That wire doesn't want to come out. Sometimes the best way to pull those out is just with your fingers, getting your fingers in there. And there we go. There is the power cable, or the power jack, I'm sorry, sitting on, next to the, uh, the hole connected by those two wires. I like Toshiba laptops, these later models. That power jack is not soldered onto the motherboard. It's just there by wires. Very easy to work with when it's like that. So let's find out why that came apart in the first place. I'm going to try to fit it back in the proper spot. And it does fit. But a piece of the plastic that was holding it in there broke off on the left-hand side. So if you try to plug the power adapter back in, it's going to pop out again. So we need to find a way to secure that jack. See, it slides in right where it should be, but only the right side plastic is holding it in. So what I'm going to do now is try to find a way to fasten that jack in there so it doesn't move. And here's the solution I came up with. We're going to use a black screw, which is going to screw into the bottom of the laptop through a hole and attach to a standoff that you would use in a motherboard. That standoff is going to be a post, basically, that's going to hold the jack into place. I'm going to put it right up against the back of the jack, drill a hole directly under where that standoff is, screw the black screw through the bottom of the laptop into the standoff, and it's not going to go anywhere once we do that. And that's how the layout's going to be. I'm using a black screw for aesthetic reasons, so it doesn't look, it doesn't stand out on the underside of the laptop or look like um, I did a hack job or anything like that. And then that jack isn't going to go anywhere. Going to take a drill here. I put a drill bit in the drill that's just a touch bigger than the width of that screw. You don't want to have too small of a hole that the screw is, is threading through because the standoff is threaded. You just want to have a screw that's going to fit gently through. Not and You don't want to make the hole too big, otherwise it's not going to gain any traction. It's going to come loose. It might rip through the bottom of the laptop. Now this drill has about two seconds left of charge in it. So I just put something under the laptop to hold it up. And the battery just died, but it was enough to, for me to make a hole. You can see some of the shards of the black plastic coming up through the hole and sitting in the laptop now, which I'll clean up in a second. Just going to put the drill bit back. It's a good thing to do, guys. When you use a tool, put it back where you found it. Don't make it keep your space messy. I like working in a clean space. I'm going to pull out those shards there so they're not jiggling around inside the laptop when we're done. Put the screw through the hole. Take the stand off, screw it on. And then as that standoff gets tighter, it's going to become very rigid up against the back of the power jack. Right now it's loose. Easiest way to tighten this, because you don't want to start spinning the standoff, you want to spin the screw. Standoff is going to have to be positioned with one of the flat sides, flat sides of the standoff up against the back of the jack. Because the standoff is like a nut. A nut has what? Six or eight flat sides. And you want one of the flat sides to be up against the back of the power jack, just for stability. I shifted the laptop in the camera view here so I could show you what I'm going to be doing. That screw is loose down there. I've on the other side of the laptop, which you can't see, I'm holding the standoff with a pair of pliers so it doesn't spin. Just a pair of needle nose. And you could see that I had to turn that screwdriver many times to get it uh, into the standoff, which is good. You know it's going to be deep in there. It's going to make a real solid connection that won't break off or come loose. Now, it is on plastic. We're going through plastic, so you don't want to over-tighten. But I do want to tighten it enough that I'm going to be sure that it's not going to come apart again. So I'm going to give it a few extra turns here, make sure it's tight. Another advantage is that the standoff is sitting on top of a piece of metal in the laptop, which I'll show you in a second. And this is the finished product for 
the jack repair. So that's what the finished product looks like. There's a side view. So the last thing to do is put everything back together, which I did by speeding up this video because it's pretty much exactly how you, you take the thing apart. Right now I'm putting all the ribbon cables back in. After I put the cover back on, I get all the wires that were on there connected, put all the screws back in. Make sure you get them all in there. You see I have a little pile over there. I know where they go because of the holes, numbers next to the holes, because this is a Toshiba laptop. Almost all of them are like that. Almost all the Toshibas are like that. So that's a good thing for us. Put the CD drive in there. Put the screw in to hold the CD drive. Last thing to do is a keyboard. Four screws holding the keyboard. And I didn't have to take the screen off for this repair. Because um, it wasn't really in the way. And everything's back together again. Power's on, as you can see. That is the finished product. And when you put the power cord in, you can push it in, you can move it around a little bit, and it's secure. So that's how you do a power jack repair.